My dudes, before we get into the video, I do need to ask, do you guys recognize this character? If you don't, that's okay. But if you did guess Kiana from Honkai Impact 3, then my dudes, just know that I am a certified Kiana simp. And this is this is relevant to the video. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace. This is a Blue Archive video. And today we are going to be doing a rundown of the patch notes. Everything you need to know about these uh, details and my thoughts on all of them. And so no more stalling, Steven. Let's jump up to the top and have a look at the first thing, which is Valkyrie. KSPD. Essentially, what we have here is the addition of a new school. So if you guys remember Cherino from the Cherino event, I think that's what it's called, Ivan Kupala. That event brought a new school called Red Winter. This is essentially that, except this time it's called Valkyrie. And so with the introduction of this score, we do have all of the tactical Blu-rays as well as the tech notes entering all of the different sources. So I'm talking like the Bounty Overpass, Total Assault and all of that. However, all of that is to be expected. There's not really much to talk about. And so let's move on to Shuni, Shun Small. All right, so quick evaluation on this kid Shun. First of all, well, she's a cutie. <laughs> but second of all, in a nutshell, she is a red type sniper with explosive and light. You can see the sniper right over here and the stats on this side with these skills so let's run through each of these and then we'll talk about kind of the evaluation should you pull should you not is she meta is she not and before I get into any of these characters I need to repeat if you like the character go for it like frick what is a game if you don't enjoy it right we can't meta slave forever and so with that out of the way let's have a talk about these skills so with the ex skill it costs five and it does single target damage which ignores target defense now on paper this kind of sounds okay right you're kind of thinking like oh it sounds like Azusa's attack and you would be kind of right to think that. So if I flick over to Azusa, you can see that her five skill cost EX skill is going to do 2k damage to a single enemy. And this isn't even ignoring defense. And so if we're talking in a vacuum, Shuni is technically better, right? Because this ignores 44% target defense. And not only does she have an insane amount of attack, 4k attack, it is also going to cost her the same. We got a five cost on the EX skill. However, from a kit point of view, Azusa has the defense down for the team, which Shun doesn't. Shun's EX skill unfortunately ignores only on that skill. It doesn't even ignore for all of Shun's abilities or auto attacks. It's only on that skill. And so you kind of got to ask yourself, do you want 44% defense down on one attack every so often because you got to rotate it? Or do you want a pretty much like 66% uptime on the defense down from Azusa? I would probably pick this one. It doesn't mean that you have to pick one or the other. I'm just saying in like a holistic point of view, Azusa is better than Shun. And of course, Azusa has like a whole bunch of other damage going for her, right? She's got the 88% damage to weaken enemies. That's freaking cracked out. Anyway, the other thing I did want to talk about is for Shuni, she does have 4k attack. That is probably the highest attack stat I have ever seen. So if I flick over to Aru, this is Aru uh, sniper rifle as well. So same archetype, 3.6k. We've got Haruna, same archetype, rifle as well, 3.6k. And then Shun, the base Shun, she has 3.1k attack. Like that is pretty freaking nutty. And so with that in mind, let's have a look at the normal skill in which every 25 seconds, she is going to deal 317% damage. So I want to compare this to Serika over here where it's the same skill, except Serica does 425%. However, what you need to remember again is the attack stat, 2.7K base attack for the Serica. And then we've got the Shun kid at 4K, which is utterly insane to be honest. But the thing about Serica or Akari or a couple of those other units are that they are very farmable and they can actually reach up to 3.4K at five stars, which is very much achievable. Like, I don't know about you guys, but Serica is five star for me now. And so with this attack stat combined with all of these like steroids, we got 67% attack over here, another 26% attack over there, and then attack speed for almost 40% for 30 seconds over here. Like, there's a reason why Serica is the powerhouse and preferred choice. Now, at this point, it kind of sounds like I'm trashing all over Shuni. Like, don't get me wrong, Shun is good. Like, all of these skills are actually fantastic. If I scroll down, we have a look at this. This one is increased attack speed, and this one is when she uses her EX skill, she decreases her attack by this much, but then she also increases her attack by this much, up to 65% afterwards. Like, this is actually good. It's just that there are a lot of alternatives. I'm talking Shiroko, I'm talking Akari, I'm talking Serika, I'm talking Nomu Shun. There are unfortunately just a lot of like potential replacements or alternatives, right? Like, for example, if we're rotating this skill, the five cost skill with Azasaz, for example, that's another five cost skill. Our rotations are going to be like giga slow. But if we were to rotate it with Serika's instead, which is a two cost skill, you can kind of see why Serika would be preferred, right? And so with that, Shun Kid if evaluation done. Uh, whether you should roll for her or not in terms of meta, I would say no. 
especially because she is a permanent unit. Like I said, again, she is actually really good. It's just that the fact that she is perma and the fact that there are so many other alternatives from a meta point of view, you don't roll on this one. All right, and so moving on from Shuni, next we have Saya Casual. Now she is actually a fantastic character. She is really, really freaking good. She is probably comparable. I would call her potentially the yellow Hibiki. And so just having a look at the EX skill creates a horizontal area in which she does continuous damage. And so as you can imagine, she is going to do a lot of work when there are a lot of enemies. And so coming down to her normal skill, she is going to do 389% damage to all enemies within a circle area, which is, it, like I said, it's pretty much Hibiki. As for her passive skill, her personal critical damage goes up by 26.6%. I don't know where I've seen this one before. And then as for the sub skill, it's not a suspicious drug. She is going to increase the crit damage of all of her allies by 17.3%. Like, it's almost like a carbon copy. Like my guys, look at this. Normal skill over here, she does the damage in a circular area. We've got the normal skill for Hibiki. This is Hibiki. We got the damage in a circular area again. Next, we've got crit damage, and then we've got crit damage to all allies. And then I come back to Saya. We've got crit damage and crit damage to all allies again. However, like I said, she is a yellow unit. And so casual Saya is going to be fantastic for kind of like a different batch. So she can handle the yellow as well as some of the blues. Okay, and so with that being said, let's hop back over to have a look at... <gasps> Who is it? It's Kiana! Almost. So her name is actually Kirino. She is a two-star unit. I'm... I don't know. I, I just feel like it's almost a carbon copy. Like my dudes, look at look at this, and then look at this. Like you could say that this is fan art of Kirino, right? Anyway, let's go back to Kirino, and unfortunately, Kirino's kit is kind of it's it's not exactly that great. So for her EX skill, she makes a smoke screen that reduces accuracies of enemies within it. Like it's okay, and then we've got another one which also reduces accuracy which is kind of okay as well. And then she's got a HP passive skill, and then she's got an enemy recovery rate decrease on the sub skill. Um, how do I put this? In a world where we could potentially control our characters in PvP, I would say that these are actually like really fantastic skills that make up a really cool kit. However, we can't control it. And like PvP is kind of the least of my concerns in this game. So I can't really recommend pulling for Kirino, especially because she is a two-star unit. And so if you guys do remember back to the beginning of the video, we did say that there is a new school called Valkyrie. Kirino is a part of that new school. And so final verdict on Kirino. She's cute. She looks like my Kiana, but she is also a perma unit and she is also two stars skip. All right. And so that said, that's all of the characters out of the way. Let's have a look at the different content we've got. So we've got the banner, we've got the Shun banner, as well as the casual Saya. Again, one more final time. Should you roll for them? You shouldn't unless you like them, but that's like, that's kind of it for all of it, right? Aside from that, we also have recruitment points resetting. So that's just getting your keystones because of like your unluckiness. And then here we have playing tag at Neverland. So this Neverland event, I've actually covered it in my previous video. If you guys have not checked it out, I do highly suggest you do. If you do, want a TLDR in a nutshell like it's kind of worth farming but still not really it's like nothing is ever worth farming again aside from that first event we had all right so moving on we have Hiero coming up with the urban warfare so this is um I do want to talk about this one because I want to talk about these rankings and kind of the experience so far so you guys have seen my box you guys have like a kind of a pretty good idea at what I can do if not you can check out one of the VODs of my streams I think we did extreme no we did yeah extreme for the last boss and so what happened was I ended up two teaming Hirokuro uh, Extreme and I ended up on 1,500 rank in Asia server. And honestly, that is a little bit concerning because like I know a lot of people are still just like chilling on the HC and still getting platinum. All I want to say right now is that that may no longer be the case like as we move forward and forward. So my dudes, Hiero is coming up. Try do prepare for it and do try start EXing because there will come a certain point where you can't hit platinum or potentially even gold anymore, but mainly platinum. If you guys do want a Hiero guide, let me know down in the comments below, but I actually, I'm pretty sure I've already made one before. However, with that said, let's move on, move on, move on, and we'll see, we've got the total assault shop reset and renewal. Okay. 
uh, kind of there's some important things here. A lot of us were told at the start of the game, like for these coins, you only ever really want to spend it on the Blu-rays. And to be honest, it kind of still holds true today. However, there like there are a lot of people now that are kind of looking at tech notes. We're like getting cucked or limited by the tech notes and not the Blu-rays. And so what I do want to say is don't feel bad about buying like even blue tier or gold tier of the tech notes, like buy tech notes, go freaking wild. However, on the other hand, if you guys have not gotten your Akanes and your Makis to like four or five stars, it's probably a good time to start. Okie dokes, and that is going to lead us to, oh my God, okay, tactical challenge. So if you guys play Precon or if you guys play any PVP with a bracket system, this will be very familiar to you. Essentially, the people in our brackets are gonna get jumbled up. So you might get more whales, you might get less whales, you might have a better or worse experience really hard to say however if you guys have not gotten your first time rewards like honestly i haven't either like i'm just freaking chilling like pvp in this game is just like so yeah just remember that after the maintenance the meta is going to change because the warfare the terrain type is going to be changed to field and so we've got units like tsubaki we've got hoshino that are still staying in meta but some others are going to be dropping out i don't really want to make a pvp guide because to be honest like i'm freaking trash at pvp everybody's trash at pvp there's like there, there is a lot of RNG and there are a lot of ways to limit the RNG, but the RNG is just so prevalent that, yeah, okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop talking about this one. And so after that, we have the bounty difficulty I. And so what that means is hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we will have higher drop rates for these guys, for our blue rates, for our tech notes. Otherwise, this credit reward is like so insignificant. Let's, let's just move on. And then to wrap things up, we have the plum blossom garden sub story episode two and the public safety bureau sub story episode one and two added. All I see is freaking free primo. I did not just say that. Pyro scenes, not primo gems, <laughs> primo scenes. <laughs> but yeah, I know a lot of you are playing for the story and I respect that. Bug fixes at the very end. And with that, that is going to take us to the end of the video. That was quite a long one, especially because this is the first time I think that I've done a patch note review. And so my dudes, it is time for the secret question. I need to know, I need to know, are you going to be rolling for this cutie? Are you going to be rolling for this cutie? Or are you going to be rolling for Kiana from Honkai Impact 3. Let me know down in the comments below and I would really appreciate it if you actually left something. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video or you would like to see more, etc., etc., you already know what to do. Please consider a like, a subscribe, a notification bell on. However, as your little Shuni once said, all good things, wait a second, are those freaking ears? I, uh, okay, uh, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.